for our third video. The topic will be how to monitor your environmental compliance. I wanted to discuss this so that I would be able to help you guys make all PCOs to ensure that your organization's environmental compliance are met to avoid NOBs that leads to fines and penalties. This is also to avoid halt in operations brought by violations incurred due to unmonitored environmental compliances. In our previous video, we discussed about ECCs and CMCs. Once you have secured your environmental compliance certificate and or certificate of non-coverage, more responsibilities await towards your joining as pollution control officer or environmental officer. Your major responsibility is to ensure that the conditions stipulated on your ECC or CNC are met and all applicable environmental laws are complied. There are different ways to monitor your compliance against environmental regulations in the Philippines or even if you have international environmental requirement to address the risk of receiving notice of violation. Personally, I use a documented monitoring tool called the Summary of Environmental Compliance. This way, I can be able to clearly identify what reports and permits need to be prioritized. Of course, all reports, licenses, and permits are important. It's just that you don't want to overdo any of its expiration dates and deadlines. Here are the five easy steps in creating a Summary of Environmental Compliance. The first step is to identify all environmental laws applicable to your organization, such as RE9275, Philippine Clean Water Act, RE9003, also known as Ecological Solid Waste Management. Second, identify its implementing rules and regulations, guidelines, orders, and memorandum to know the specific requirement you need to comply. Example, in RE6969, there is corresponding order entitled DENR Administrative Order or DAO 2013-22 also known as Revised Procedures and Standards for the Management of Hazardous Waste, Revising DAO 2004-36. Third, list down the specific requirements. For example, the Hazardous Waste Generators ID or HGID under RA6969 Discharge Permit under 9275, Permit to Operate, PTO under RE8749, Chemical Control Order or CCO under RE6969 also, and so on and so forth. The fourth step is to identify the validity of the documents, such as expiration date or if the certificate has no expiration. Examples are the PTO, which has a validity of 5 years. DP or discharge permit with one year validity, the HGID which doesn't expire unless amended, same as the CCO, also no expiration unless amended. This is usually written on the certificate itself. Then, for the fifth step, create a summary indicating the statutory or regulatory requirements to be complied, revisions, specific requirement, expiration date, renewal, amendment, or new requirement. Let's further discuss this on the next page. In this scenario, I'm the appointed PCO at Manufacturing Company of Electronic Products. Let us refer to the presented table. One of the environmental law I need to comply is RE6969 because our company generates hazardous waste such as electronic waste from NG products, silica gel, hazardous chemicals, and so on and so forth. The first column includes information or overview of the statutory or regulatory standard. In this case, again, the example is RE6969, an act to control toxic substances and hazardous and nuclear wastes. On the second column, you see that I have identified the DAO 2013-22 as the provision we need to comply with a specific requirement shown in three columns, the HGID. HGID has no expiration indicated on fourth column, followed by the target dates for preparation, application, and releasing. Note that the specific date to be written on the table is not absolute, meaning those dates are just rough estimates on releasing of permits or certificates because this will depend on the agency. The important thing is in their part. As long as you submitted the new application, 
when you wall or reports on time, you are all good because beyond that is not under your control anymore. For the next example, the statutory or regulatory standard is RA 9275, written on its section 14, that discharge permit shall be required in all owners or operators of facilities that discharge regulated effluents such as manufacturing of electronics, gas station, hospitals, and other establishments that releases polluted water. For the given example, the date of release for discharge permit is March 11, 2022. It doesn't mean that the release of discharge, per discharge permit is guaranteed on the same date. Take note that the expiring permits shall be renewed 30 calendar days before the date of official expiration indicated on such permit. Before we end this discussion, I would like to give you some PCO tips and side notes to show my gratitude for making it this far on my video. With that, please take note of the following. Always remember that the environment is composed of land, water, and air. You can start identifying and analyzing what are the rules and regulations to prevent or mitigate pollution to the release on the environment. Always start with the following main environmental regulations. PD 1586 RA 6969, which protects land, water, and air. RA 9275, which protects water. RA 9003, which protects land, water, and air. Lastly, the RA 8749 specifically protects the air. That concludes the end of our video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comment box if there's any specific topics or questions you want me to discuss next, or if there's anything you want to clarify on this discussion. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so that I will be inspired to make more videos like this. Till our next video, bye!